Hello folks, it's a great time again to have an interaction and conversation around the writing. That's essentially what we do. So a, a content writer must, uh, must be familiar with loads of information. Um, today our job is cut out for us and we do not have enough time to waste. But again, I have to remind you that I have my previous videos on how you can bid, how you can get your Upwork account approved and loads of other uh, information that uh, is in there. So, specifically we'll be addressing SEO content. And how do you write SEO content? Uh, without any equivocation, this is the aspect of writing that attracts a lot of uh, writers and a lot of clients on any freelance platform. And I say that confidently because I've been on that and I've experienced that on different platforms and I know that greatly what you need essentially is to have an interest, competency and proficiency in that aspect of writing, SEO, the search engine optimization content, all right? Um, having said that, there are tips to delivering great content in this uh, niche. There are tips and you must learn those things. Uh, they're not difficult. There are things you know, but perhaps, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times we take things for granted. A lot of times we assume, a lot of times uh, we do not pay close attention to, to those details. And uh, it, 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 they come back to haunt us. Our negligence will come back to haunt us. And that's not good enough. All right. So what are those tips you must learn? As you want to uh, deliver great content uh, that will uh, be optimized on search engines whether it is google whether it is msn whether it's mozilla whether it is whatever search engines you are using so they must rank high such that when your title is entered into the internet it's coming back as maybe top 15 or top 16 or top 20. that's beautiful Get top 10 why not but it takes time it takes an understanding of the dynamics it takes an understanding of the tips it takes an understanding of the ways to go about it so how do you write uh, search engine optimized content um, this is where we start and it, this is the first thing you must know there are clients that come with their specific requirements all right there are clients that come with uh, there are guidelines, structures that you must follow when they send a job to you. All right. So uh, you must understand your clients. That's the first thing, because the client determines how the work goes, what it wants, the message you wants to pass across, the central question that your content should be answering, and what the what you want the audience to do thereafter. So understand the client if there is a preset requirement if there is a preset guideline please don't hesitate to follow but if there is none then it behoves you the writer to come up with a structure to come up with guidelines that will uh you will use to run through the entire uh uh, uh, uh process of writing okay so that's the first thing understand your clients. Uh, 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 there, there's an African adage that says that uh, you don't uh, you don't cut the hair of a man in his absence. So it is difficult for you to just uh, take something out of the context of what the client or your employer wants you to do. Whether it is reasonable or not, it is not uh, a question for you. It is the question for the client. And like I told you when you are submitting your proposal, you can make suggestions or ask questions. If there are things that are not clear or there are ways you think the client will go that will benefit, why not make suggestions, ask questions. So that's for the client. Understand his requirements, understand his guideline, understand the structure, what he wants, his expectations, and be ready to meet it. That's the first. Secondly, the second thing is to define the goal of your content. What central question 
or questions? Is your content answering? What do you want the, your audience who is at the receiving end to know or to do after reading your content? If, for example, a question like this or a title like this, um, six best car batteries. That's a product description. That's under product description, but it's still an SEO content, right? If such a question or a topic is uh, is what you are addressing, it's what you are writing on. How do you address it? How do you? So, what is the question of six best? Uh, car batteries. What is the what is the client expecting? What do you think your audience should be expecting? So what is the focus? What is the goal? What is the end of such a title? So if you are giving such a topic, the first thing to ask yourself is, what am I expected to do? So, what you're expected to do with such a content is to write the best six car batteries. You are not expected to write the best car battery. But the six best. So, you must describe each of the six. You can eventually, maybe in your final thought, in your wrap, or your recommendation, you can say car battery so 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 is the best. Based on this, 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 and this. But you must specifically describe each of those car batteries. But how you go about writing the body and the other one, other parts of your content. So the second thing, like I told you, is to understand the central question, the essential uh, focus of your content. Number three draft a structure and this is why a lot of content don't get uh, don't get ranking on search engines don't get optimized on search engines because they are not structured and if the content is not structured it's you it 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 gets a uh, few visits it gets few reviews only a few people read such content because it is just it is just a uh, blank there is no structure, there is nothing to follow. So, draft a structure. And how do you draft a structure? That's quite important. Your structure must have, must have uh, an introduction. But even before an introduction, some clients may ask for meta description. So, meta description, how do you identify meta description in an SEO content? So, meta description, for example, uh, we we'll read something, and I'm going to give you about six examples so when you're reading when you go online and you see all of those things you know those are meta description all right um, one are you in search of details about so 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 let's use the example we used the other time car batteries are you in search of the six best car batteries on the market in this article you will learn about the six best car batteries that will suit your car number two spare a few minutes to read about our experts or in-depth analysis of the six best of the six best car batteries on the market it could be are you a super or are you a car owner in need of the best car battery that you can use for your car? I have good news for you because we've taken time to look at the six best car batteries in the market or on the market. All right. So those are examples you can use. You can say, if, are you in search? If you are a car owner, are you a car driver? And things like that that are related to car automobile. So that is. A structure that's a meta description the next item has to be your introduction the introductory part which is called also called icebreaker is to answer the question your introduction must answer the question and it must contain keyword 
and I'm going to deal with keyword extensively in my next um, in my next uh, video. I'm going to deal extensively with that. So uh, we're looking at keywords in your introduction. Keywords are those things that um, visitors to internet or your audience can type on the or search engines and quickly come out with a topic. So if for example six car batteries or six best car batteries. So keywords you have to search for keywords that can easily direct visitors website visitors or blog visitors to six best car batteries. Keywords such as car batteries. Six best car batteries. Those are keywords. So your introduction must uh, introduce that um, for example I can say um, the challenges of many car drivers have always been how to identify the best uh, car batteries on the market I have introduced the keyword don't forget um, there are a lot of them there are many types of car batteries there are many models of these in the market by different manufacturers but here are the six so answer the question don't beat about the book usually introduction should not be more than uh, maybe 50 words or maybe about 200 characters no, depending again on your clients your clients may ask for more it may ask for less if there is a guideline follow the guideline if there are requirements please do follow so but usually your introduction should answer the question straight away list the six car batteries tell them what the challenge of finding the best car batteries can be we're using car batteries now because we're using automobile niche as an example so that is uh, how to get your introduction after your introduction you must put headings and start your paragraphing headings like i said your meta description it has to be normal font and all of that your introduction can be so after your meta description there should be title and that title has to carry a title style in your microsoft word let it carry title style so after that we move to the headings usually your word has to be under headings we have heading one heading two heading three heading four and so on and so forth but usually when you have a sub topic or a sub heading it has to go with heading two a sub topic has to go with heading two okay so um if i have six best um, car batteries and i pick car battery one if i list car battery one it has to be heading two car battery two heading two up to car battery uh, six they all have to be in heading two all right now after, after doing that you may have highlighted features of each of those car batteries the, when you have the highlighted features it has to be in heading four it has to be in heading four so your heading four will carry those bullet points that you're going to want to list as highlighted features of the uh, car battery you're describing all right but there must be maybe two or three paragraphs that will give a general overview of the car battery you're describing maybe it's deluxe whatever one you de you describe it ensure that you have uh, you have uh, highlighted features bullet points maybe four or three if the client is is if it's a promotional material if a promotional content you will not put uh, uh, cons but if it's not a promotional content the promotional content will mean the content that is asking the audience to go and buy because you're recommending those batteries so if it is not a promotional item if you're not asking you're just giving a general description of each of those car batteries what you do is to put pros and cons so that they will know oh what they 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 they, should, they will meet by the time they're buying or using 
the car batteries all right so after putting your paragraphs your paragraphs have to do not have to be lengthy maybe four lines is enough four lines for a paragraph do not exceed four or five at most max is five because the writer is in, i mean the, the the reader that's your audience now is interested in uh, picking the content one after the other so make sure that max for a paragraph is five then uh, be conversant with transition words what are those transition words because it is th those are the words that lead you from one paragraph to the other or from one sentence to the other for example you have however you have although you have but you have as you have uh, uh, um, um, with you have uh, so many of them as much as and, and so on and so on so find those transition words i'm going to release a pdf document for you um to as free download it free then you use it as some of those transition words that you can use in your in your in your, in your content please they are very very important that you use them They're quite important to your work that they, they generate they generate a, a kind of connection a kind of network between first paragraph to second paragraph or first uh, sentence to second sentence and so on and so on depending on how, the context you are using them so ensure that you use them and you use them uh, correctly all right um, don't stop your word with uh, keywords uh, I've made mention of that in past uh, earlier that excuse me that you don't you don't uh, you don't uh, put too many keywords in your work if you fluff your your work with too many keywords it will bounce back to 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 rank very low it will rank very low so ensure that you don't uh, you don't put too many words in your content too many keywords in your content some we even has i've had a client i've had a lot a number of clients who had for just insert the keywords three times at the opening in the middle section of the content at the last part of the content so yeah, so um, if your client asks for that fine but your keywords absolutely should not be more than um, maybe five times six times depending on the length of the content again uh, a, a 300 word article now shouldn't be more than maybe twice more than twice if they're just if it's just one keyword there are occasions when you have two a lot of keywords when you have about five keywords spread them across across the intro the middle or which is the body of your of your content and the the last part so spread them across then your keywords insertion should be natural don't don't uh, don't uh, uh, put them because you want to insert them then a keyword is not fitting does not fit into where you want to use it and you want to force it in it will alter the entire sentence and will make no sense at all so let it be natural let it come in naturally and let it make sense grammatically into wherever you are placing it uh, 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 wherever you are placing it so make sure that as much as possible your keyword the use of your keyword is natural and it flows um, with the the sentence it flows with your grammar it flows with everything you're going to do so that it's your content will make sense to the reader at the end of the day so that's that's about that then uh make the length of your article a lot more reasonable um 300 words 500 words 1000 words depending on the, what you're doing for a product description like the one we're doing now uh, six uh, best car batteries 2005 3000 15 it's okay because this is not just there are millions reading this content that want to key him maybe to use the product maybe to go and buy the products so make it lengthy give enough specifications enough features 
of the of the products you're describing. So let it be a little a, a little more extensive, expansive in terms of the content, in terms of the explanation you're giving to each of the products you want to describe. So it's also important. Um, on the final note, um, ensure as uh, that um, you don't uh, overshoot the content. Uh, to don't overshoot the content. Um, there's something I need to add under your structure. There should be a final wrap. There should be a final wrap. Sometimes you are asked to put fact, which is frequently asked uh, questions. If you are asked to put that, why not ensure that you put that and let it reflect in whatever you are doing, uh, if it is required. But most times, product descriptions come with uh, frequently asked questions. So make sure you insert before you go to the final uh, uh, verdict. You can call it a wrap, you can call it your final thought, you can call it conclusion, you can call it a wrap up. That is the final part of the work, which is a conclusion, which is a roundup of whatever you've been doing from beginning to the end. Don't give new information in your introduction. I mean, your conclusion. Don't give new uh, information. Make sure it is a summary of everything you've been writing and ensure that you give them, uh, make it short. The final thing I'm going to say to you is that make your sentences short. Make your sentences short. And I repeat again, make your sentences short. Simple sentences, compound sentences, Fine. Don't write compact, complex sentences. Then your transition words will help you in that regard. So your, your transition words will help you to join one sentence, um, two sentences to make it one. So um, make your sentences very short. Don't make too long sentences because by the time you go to search engine uh, analysis, SEO analysis, you find out that when you write two long sentences, they, they tend to come back um, not, not uh, readable. So the readability of your content will be defeated. Besides making the sentences short, also ensure that you use simple vocabularies. Don't repeat vocabularies, use simple ones. So in using simple ones, readers are able to get familiarized with the content. It means, what I'm saying, that the words you'll be using should be related to the content you are writing. Automobile content should, relate, should come with automobile, auto, automotive vocabularies. Don't go and import vocabularies from every, any other niche. Once it is car battery, there are parts of car battery that you must mention. Do you understand the determinants? Those are terms related to batteries. So you must use them and use them judiciously and use them correctly and faithful to the central question you're answering. So that's um, how much we're going to take today. I hope you'll be able to uh, take home one or two things that will help you, guide you in, uh, in, uh, in your writing. So please and please, we are going to bring out more videos that, we is going to, uh, that are going to be uh, explicit about certain niches. So make sure you prepare yourself for the next edition, next session when we meet again. I remain your master tutor James. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, watch my previous videos. Um, I promise you the next one uh, is going to take you by surprise.